Hey everybody, Jay Baruna here. I'm starting off my other off day series. This is Outpost 2 Divided Destiny. I've talked about this at length at the end of my Dead Space 3 playthrough, but I figured I can show off just a little bit of gameplay. This is just going to be an introduction video, and then we're going to get into one of the campaigns when we get started. Uh, another thing I'm going to do here is show the intro cinematic probably at the very end of this video because I don't like starting off videos with that. I just figured I'd get right into this and show what's going on here. So this is Outpost 2, and uh, it's an RTS. And uh, the way this works, a lot of this has to do with having vehicles and docking and then building structures. So, as you can see, for example, right here, this uh, agrodome. This, it grows food, and it's disabled because it's not connected to the command center. Everything needs to be connected by these oxygen tubes. And I don't have anything to build an oxygen tube, so what I'm going to do is go to the vehicle factory and build an earth worker. This is one of the tutorial missions, just so you know. Uh, also, another thing too, these right here, these are disabled because there isn't enough power. So what I'm going to do is go to my structure factory, and I will build a tokamak. Okay, there's my earth worker. I'm going to have it come up here, and we'll build a tube right there, and it'll connect it to the command center. Again, this is just the tutorial just to kind of show how this works. Now, I haven't decided what game speed I want to play on. I'm on 7 right now. Let's see. That's good, that's good. Scrolling speed. Let's see, yes. Vehicle shadows, yes. Music. Where's the game speed? I, I clicked on every single thing but that. As you can see, now the Acrodome is, is going. So if we head over to this uh, resources report, you will see the food production is positive 86. It's like per cycle, basically. So the structure kit's manufactured in the structure factory. So what I do is I bring these convex over, and I load it up with a tokamak. I know I'm getting right into this. This is just to show off how this game generally works, just to show how things go to see if you're maybe interested in this. So we can bring this over and we can make a tokamak. Tokamaks are automatic and uh, you can put them anywhere. So a lot of this has to do with morale. A lot of this has to do with having the proper colonist count while also researching things to develop weapons because you have to fight another colony and then you also have to escape the planet. Another thing I'm doing is you can kind of see my... Uh, yeah, power sword, as we heard. Um, you can kind of see my desktop in the background around the edges. That's because I have to play this in windowed mode. If I maximize this full screen, all it does is zoom the whole game out. So I have to play in windowed mode, basically. So we wait for this to build, basically. I might speed the game up eventually. Bring this guy over here. We apparently had enough scientists at some point. Another thing to do is, another thing you have to keep in track here are workers and scientists. So every building takes a worker and or a scientist or more. So, you have children. Let's go to my population. Where is my population? Colonists. Available workers and sciences, zero and zero. So, this nursery helps babies uh, be born then also stay alive. And then those babies grow into adults, into workers. And then those workers can, uh, you know, properly function some of these buildings that we need. And then further... Well, this is power and power. We don't have any available workers, though. Uh, so what I can do is just idle these to save power, as you can see. Then that powers up a residence. And then we also use scientists to research things. Now, we don't have any scientists available. You can assign less than the uh, maximum project staff, and it just goes slower. And it also depends on your morale. And morale is dependent on if your food production is good. Also, if your food production is bad, everyone's going to die. Um, there's also a resource collection, which is this common ore smelter. Uh... Apparently, I have another thing down here. I don't know when that happened. So it's a little jerky as I scroll around, I understand. Also, it's kind of hard because I'm playing in windowed mode for me to to scroll. But I think I can make this work. And then as, uh, as scientists become available, what I will end up doing is... Uh, well, what am I missing here? Workers. Well, I could just wait around for workers. The problem is I just don't have enough. What I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, idle these buildings down here so that way I can get workers and scientists. We'll idle this. So now we have workers for everything. We can actually turn the hospital back on. That'll keep people more alive, I guess. Um, and I have three available scientists. So we can go ahead and start cybernetic teleportation. That's actually uh, the start of weapons. So this is just sort of an amalgamation of all sorts of different tech paths. This is, again, just a tutorial that I wanted to show off. But this is the general feel of the game. It moves at about this pace. Occasionally, I might be getting attacked. Every so often, there's like a volcano that will spew lava. There's electrical storms. There's tornadoes. All sorts of stuff that can just ruin your day. But the idea is um, we would, you know, have cargo trucks that are bringing ore back and forth. You can see my resources down here. Every so often, I get like an update down here from the uh, the adjutant, if you will. Uh, I forget what they're actually called in this. But they're, uh, they're savants. Something like savants. Anyways, you can see this... Um, 
it'll tick up very shortly, but I might go ahead and yeah, it does it goes in like chunks. It's very strange. Yeah, game speed. Let's let's crank it up to eight. I don't want to do ten. I think that can get a little too quick for me. It's very hard to keep up with if I decide to increase it later. Anyway, that's the general flow of this game. Uh, so one problem is any of the digital downloads of this game, one of the problems is well, actually, let's head to the vehicle factory. Did this open up anything else? No, so we research it. Normally, that would unlock other research tiers, and then we might be able to build something from the vehicle factory. But um, the problem is none of the cutscenes work. So they do work if I open them directly from the folder, but I'll show you what happens here. If I end this and I head back to the, the main menu... Again, this is just a tutorial. This gives you an idea if this might be something that's interested. It's so such a good game, though, such a good game. If we go to New Campaign and we start it, this is what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the intro cinematic, and then I'm going to cut to when I'm actually starting it. We'll watch it, and then I will end the video. And then, again, this is just an introduction for Outpost 2. I'll be uploading the first episode on Saturday. As normal, I do all the off-day stuff on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So I hope this is something you'll be interested in. It just gets better and better. I love this game so much. Anyway, uh, let me go ahead and cut to the opening cinematic. Saban series computer activated. Beginning alpha command level briefing. For your eyes only. Historical overview. The Earth is dead. As the asteroid fragments landed, the last few survivors departed the solar system, seeking a new home among the stars. World after unsuitable world was rejected. Their resources low, their situation desperate. A marginally suitable planet was found. They called the world New Terra. It was cold, dry, nearly airless, but they saw possibilities. In that spirit of optimism, they named their colony Eden. They came with the best of intentions, to build, grow, and thrive. And for a time, they did. Then conflict arose between the colonists, and a splinter colony, Plymouth, was founded. New Terra would be their home, but on what terms? Plymouth wished to live in harmony with the planet, adapting themselves to live in its harsh realm, no matter the cost. Eden planned to tame its new home to conquer it and terraform it into a new Earth using advanced biotechnology. The two philosophies could not coexist. Talks grew heated as Plymouth learned Eden's secret intention to proceed with their plan. In protest, Plymouth destroyed the last satellite link, condemning them to silence. Only one planet, but two very different worlds. Which will you choose? Whoa, that got very bright there for a moment. Thank you, uh, GOM player. Alrighty, so that was the introduction to the whole game. Now, you can play as either Eden or Plymouth. I'll probably do both eventually. The campaigns are similar in the mission objectives, but playing as the two factions are very different. Now, the two factions... Both are trying to escape the planet and also are at war with each other. It's ridiculous. So I'm probably going to do Eden, play on normal, my first playthrough. Depending on how I'm feeling regarding my skills with the game, I might do a hard mode playthrough of Plymouth. We will see. And you know what? This is probably a good time. I'll go ahead and watch. We can watch the intro of the, uh, the Eden campaign. And then the first mission is going to be very, very short. I'll throw that up on Saturday, be very, very short, but I'm running out of time for this week to record, so that's probably good, because I need to catch up. I need to record some StarCraft, too. And then, uh, and then, like, Mission 2 onwards will 
be much longer, be like normal episodes that are on my channel. But obviously the first one, it's only going to be like seven, eight minutes maybe. But let's watch the, uh, the Eden intro. Among the remaining colonists of Eden, there is rumor, uneasiness, and fear. Their brothers and sisters in Plymouth seem lost. Eden leaders make brave promises, but behind the shuttered windows of the most advanced lab, secret projects progress. The rumors end when a breakthrough is announced. New Terra will be just like Earth, not in centuries, but in a single lifetime. Then, the dream becomes a nightmare. A mysterious, invisible killer has been unleashed. Escape is the only choice. Take what you need to survive. Flee and regroup. Remember, Commander, extinction is not an option. It's actually a pretty good intro for a game like this. I apologize for the bright flashing. This is the only way I can play these videos without the game just being all wonky. So uh, at the end of every mission, we're going to see like a broken cutscene. I'll just skip it, and we just won't watch it because the victory cutscenes are like nothing. There's no actual story that happens in any of the cutscenes except these intro. There's actually like a novella that was written. You can read it online. There's like a wiki that has it all written out. It's actually very good. Uh, the story is very, very good. I mean, you can follow the basic story uh, it, with the missions of like rebuilding the star, rebuilding the spaceship, because basically Eden has just unleashed like a disease on the planet, which is why we're trying to escape. And then poor Plymouth gets caught up in it. And then they also have to escape. Anyway, this has been Jay Barino. I hope this is something you'll be interested in. It's a very, very cool game, much more along the lines of StarCraft, except there's a lot more interesting twists to the game. I feel it's very involved, and I absolutely love it. Search for Outpost 2 Divided Destiny download if this is something that's interesting to you. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.